week six of USL League One wraps up with a sunny Sunday matinee on serve in Lexington, Kentucky, brought to you by UK Healthcare. Parker Johnson here, thrilled to be bringing you Lexington SC versus Spokane Velocity FC. The table looks like this entering our final game of the weekend. Two wins already on the board for the expansion club out of Washington State. They find themselves in sixth place coming in. Lexington in the midst of a three-game losing streak in the league. But they could jump up to fourth place with a win today. And as we take a look at Lexington, look no further than Cameron Lancaster, a goal scorer's goal scorer, second all-time in goals in the championship. And he got his first goal in USL League One against Greenville. He's looking to add to that total today. And one of the young players that he's taken under his wing is Lexington native Isaac Cano, who's really become a fan favorite earlier in the season. And he will be in the starting lineup today. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, our visitors Spokane Velocity led by a pair of heels. One old, one new. USL League One fans will be very familiar with the work of Luis Heel, who put his talents on display for Union Omaha. And it was Javier Martin Heel getting this goal against Charlotte that got Spokane Velocity tied up in that game. That's two out of the five goals they've scored this season. We got a great matchup on tap today. The stage is set for Spokane Velocity versus Lexington SC going head to head for the first time ever. We got kickoffs and lineups coming up next. Lexington is the Kentuckiest place in the world. Just look at it. It's by far the bluegrassiest, the bourbonist. See? The artsiest and hands down, the horsiest. Oh, look, that one has a baby. I don't know why you would look anywhere else. Looking for the coolest, most Kentuckiest getaway? Look at Lexington. Girls like you aren't runners, they said. Well, I wasn't. Let's go ahead and get some pictures of that name, okay? Six months down the drain. Give up? Keep the rhythm going. Or get up. Perfect. Who's not a runner now? Yeah, you don't up. have to be an elite athlete to be treated like one. UK Healthcare Orthopedic Surgery and Sports Medicine. The power of advanced medicine. A beautiful day for soccer in Georgetown, Kentucky, presented by our friends at UK Healthcare. Lexington SC hosting Spokane Velocity as we wrap up week six in USL League One. And we're gonna kick things off for you by looking at the lineups. First, for our home standing Lexington SC. And it's gonna be a 4-4-2 formation in terms of personnel. Much more familiar lineup to what Lexington fans have gotten used to in the early part of the season after they made six changes for their last game against Tormenta that ended in a 3-0 defeat. Cameron Lancaster leads the line. Let's take a look at Spokane Velocity lining up in a 4-2-3-1 today under head coach Lee Viedman. They've got two wins this season and they've spread the love around. 
five different players have scored a goal for Spokane Velocity, but the line will be led by Josh Doling up top. Luis Heel is your player to watch, and the number 10 right there in the middle. Both teams breaking the huddles and getting set. This will be the first time we ever see these two square off and couldn't ask for a much better day. 75 degrees and sunny here at Toyota Stadium. And a great crowd on hand. Lexington trying to snap that three game skid in the league, four games overall that has plagued them and dropped them into ninth place. But sixth place Spokane will provide a tough matchup today. As the old saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. It's an apt metaphor for a Lexington SC's season thus far, but today it's Spokane Velocity that come crashing into the horse capital of the world as Lexington tries to snap out of its early season haze. Lexington in the home, black jerseys, green trim, on a beautiful set of kits and in the away uniforms, Spokane Velocity, all white from head to toe, that sparkling blue. Cameron Lancaster just awaiting the final signals from our referee crew here. He is on the precipice of an incredible milestone, nearing 100 career goals. He already has two this season in the Open Cup, one in the league, and he is a player that everybody around the league, not just fans of Lexington, are expecting a whole lot out of this season. Coming over from the Commonwealth rival, Louisville City, and slotting right into this USL1 team where he's taken charge and led the line in every single game in the league so far this season. That certainly will not change today, but a lot of changes to the starting lineups for Lexington as we are underway from Toyota Stadium. My name is Parker Johnson. Thank you so much for joining us here on ESPN Plus for this USL League One action. A whistle early will give Lexington a chance to build from the back here. Abel Caputo, you can see in the middle of the pitch, another one of those players instituted back into the starting lineup this week. Darren Powell told me that all the changes for their last game against Tormenta were forced into, and thankfully they've had some time to rest up and get some of those starters healthy and kind of going with the unit that brought them a couple of really good results at the beginning of the season. Kalen Fox along the back line, paired with Modesto Mendez today. Corrales back at left back as well. And he is the one who nearly gives it away to Josh Doling. A physical presence up top. One of three former Missouri State players who made their way to Spokane this season and the Velocity's first ever League One campaign under Lee Viedman. Ball played into the channel here. Azad Liaudi gets to the end of it. Oncoming Tate Robertson cut away by Derek Waldeck. And some positive buildup play from Lexington resulting in an early corner presented by UK Healthcare. Well, it looked very similar to a goal that Liaudi conjured up against Greenville Triumph where he Cut it back and found Lancaster in the box. This one out for the set piece that Corrales will swing in. The first header was won by Mendez and then eventually tidied up by Spokane. A dangerous bouncing ball in the box. Luis Heal the man doing the defending. Have another UK Healthcare corner kick swung in by the lefty. And again, Lexington first to it at the back post this time. Yonkum was there. Spokane tried to carry it away, and it's found Yonkum again. A step over. Going towards the end line. Defended by Longmire, who bounces it back up off of him, but the ball had already trickled out of play. A third corner in quick succession inside the first three minutes of this contest. 
and this is a welcome start for Lexington. Talked about the little skid they've been on. And they have had periods of games where you've seen this kind of domination, but to see it right from the start, very bright signs early on. Spokane tried to weather the storm. Dealt with again by Heal, who's done some crucial defending in the early stages. Not the place that you're used to seeing him for the most part. Ball whipped in from the backside. A towering header that falls inside the box as Fox is trying to pick it up. He stayed forward from the last corner kick. Carried away by Kamarni Smith. Works it out wide with Doling. Spokane on the counter now with Smith again. He's followed closely by Modesto Mendez as Smith peers back, decides to drop it off as Spokane get their first opportunity to get their foot on the ball after a flurry of corners early on from Lexington. What a start here at Toyota Stadium. Two teams capable of playing some beautiful football. As we get a look at our UK healthcare injury report, Ates Diouf is a huge absence today for Lexington SC. He missed their last game as well. And Michael Agbula still out for our home team. Couple names on the injury list for Spokane as well. Michael Rojas and Grayson DuPont. Rojas got a start in their US Open Cup triumph. Ball through the channel, cleared away by Fox. Lexington went out in the first round in one of the big cup sets of that round about a month ago against Vermont Green on the road. A wild 4-3 game. And Spokane, meanwhile, have had much less goals in their contest, but happy to progress through the first two rounds. And they've got a round three matchup coming up on Wednesday against Las Vegas Lights as the competition steps up to a championship foe. But that was their last game, that round two match. They won one nil against LA Force. And that was 11 days ago. So they've had a long time to rest up and prepare themselves. I spoke to Lee Viedman. He said that they were taking this time to rest and reflect and moving forward, refine some things in terms of their style of play. It's been very consistent across the board. Every single match, we've seen consistency in the lineups. So far, nine of the 11 starting places have remained the same through their first four USL League One games. And consistency is one of those elements that is so critical for a expansion team in their first season. Finding a group of players that you trust and Viedman has been able to build that, imprinting his identity on this young and mismatched squad. They've got everything from MLS experience to European players. Of course, some familiar names to League One fans as well, like Luis Hill and Derek Waldeck. It's all come together to form a very, very strong unit. Played from back to front by Lexington as they continue their hot start. Christian Liu Young left by Lancaster. Another positive spell for the home team. Pinned back, Mendez flicked on by Lancaster, looking for Liaudi, coming back from an offside position. Carlos Marancio going long. 
and Pierre Reedy unable to control that one. Waldeck tosses it into Marcelo Lage. We will get to face his old team on Wednesday, former Las Vegas Lights player. He and Ahmed Longmire have formed a fantastic center back duo as Lee Audi dispossesses, throws his man to the ground, and then he's stood up strongly by Lodge. Spokane nearly caught out in the aggressive play of Lee Audi. Proving the point that I was building to there, the center back partnership with Longmire and Lodge really been so steady for Velocity FC. A little bit of miscommunication between Reedy and Doling as Amal Knight gets his first touch of the game. Suspended for the last contest against Tormenta after a controversial red card against Greenville Triumph that completely flipped that game on its head. Lexington had gotten out to a 2-0 lead. It was 2-1 when he was red carded. They went on to lose 3-2 late on in that one. Lancaster knows he's offside here. He's left it for his teammate Cano. Cano allowed to play on. Back to Yonkum. Robertson looking for the return. Cut out by Longmire. Lancaster getting back involved. And Smith doing the defensive duties as Heel carries away. Finds Roman Metzenier. Today starts a long stretch on the road for Spokane. Three straight road games over the course of the next week. They have yet to pick up a single point in their travels. And perhaps it speaks more to the awesome home advantage that they've developed at one Spokane Stadium already, getting that community rallied around as Reedy gets all the way near the edge of the six yard box before taking a tumble, no foul seen by the referee as Mendez saw him off of it and into the hands of Knight. Finely balanced contest so far. Spokane offering plenty on the counter. Lexington certainly under control of proceedings through the first 10 minutes. Thank you to everybody joining us wherever you may be on this Sunday afternoon. And special shout out to the away watch party at Brick West up in Spokane. Sure that members of the 509 Syndicate tuning in out there. The official watch party of Spokane Velocity. Heel with the through ball. Reedy one-on-one -on -one with Fox, stumbles backwards and finds Waldeck. Looking for options in the box, still Fox defending. Colin Fernandez with the switch of play. Smith bringing it in and tackled away by Jorge Corrales. Now Lexington to turn to break. Cano, big strides into space. Metzenier trying to track him down and an excellent recovery tackle from the Madagascar International. He is just an outstanding, outstanding fullback. Roman Metzenier, over 240 professional appearances in Ligue 1 and Ligue 2 in France. The top two tiers in the French system. He's a longtime international for Madagascar as well. A 2019 MLS All-Star with Minnesota United. Truly one of the great off-season acquisitions to build the foundation of Spokane. And he followed that all up by scoring their opening home goal at one Spokane Stadium to 
officially cut the ribbon there in front of about 5,000 fans against Richmond. Keep an eye on the long throw in here. You can see where these players are lining up and it Metanir will take them from both sides. Sending it long, Liaudi clears his lines but out for a corner kick. So it's almost like you get an extra corner when you got the long throw capabilities. They've used it to their advantage in the Open Cup. As they, they scored a game-winning goal off one in stoppage time against Ballard. In their first round win. Now it's heel from the left corner. High ball in, back post, Lodge. Too high. But Spokane clearly showing their ability on set pieces, whether it's the throw, whether it's the corner kick that was defended as well as it possibly could, and he still had a chance at the header. Credit Fox for putting off the six foot five Marcelo Lage. There's only so much you can do against that kind of size. Heel spots a beautiful pass. Doling was unable to shake the defender, get on the end of it. Spell for Spokane as we approach the quarter hour mark. Night to go long and a great take from Lancaster. Cano dancing, finding Yonkum. Opens up the play to the right side for Lou Young. Misplaced pass from Mendez, unable to keep the rhythm going for Lexington. That's really been the case. It's been misplaced passes and miscommunications, the likes of which you don't expect from a team so talented with so much ability out on the pitch. And it's a team that when you look at the players on display, you just think that at some point it's all gonna click together. But there's been so many similar moments where there's a good sequence they're not able to turn it into anything, or one little mistake kind of derails the attack. They've controlled a lot of their games in terms of possession, but one of the lowest shot totals in the league, only seven shots per game, and a lowly conversion rate of 8.6% on those shots has led to Lexington only scoring three goals so far in league play. Robertson. Cano bodies off Metzenaire. Dazzling footwork in the bright boots. And Corral is around the corner. Metzenaire, great recovery. Forced out for a UK healthcare corner kick. Robertson over to take it. And that's another UK healthcare corner for Lexington Sporting. Number two, Tate Robertson. The Ohio native raising the right hand, peering into the area. Too close to Marancio. And no Ates de Youth today. No Jaden Onan also in the match day squad. A couple of huge pieces in the middle of the park that Darren Powell does not have at his disposal. Youth, the club's all-time leading goal scorer thanks to those 15 goals last season. And he had one already this year as well. Waldeck with acres of space. 
Picks out a ball, whipped low, and headed away by Lou Young. Well, this is the last player you can give this type of breathing room on the outside. Waldeck, such a polished delivery on his left foot. Six assists last season in League One play. Loads of chances created, led Knoxville in that category. Here's Heal. Open header and a goal for Longmire. One nil to the visitors. As Heal supplies the goods and Longmire left all alone in the six yard box, had no choice but to put it in the back of the net. Miscommunication. Strikes again and set pieces the struggle for Lexington. Alarming that Longmire was left this open. Maybe a little bit of a block on the back post. Colin Fernandez in there, but the referees, you can see, had eyes on the play. And signals for the goal. So check out the contact. Two Lexington players crashing into one another, but nobody even close, no, not within distance of playing the ball. And it looks like the player who was on the line also took a tumble. But the pattern continues for Lexington, struggling to defend set pieces. They gave up three corner kick goals, remember, in that US Open Cup defeat to Vermont. Last week against Tormenta, a corner and a penalty conceded. And Darren Powell told me about the emphasis they've put on it in training as a unit to try to correct those mistakes. It's been a point of focus and still, unfortunately, just have not gotten that figured out. Metzenaer, chance to measure one in and the leaping Kamarni Smith inches away from doubling the lead. Spokane with a lift since that goal. Longmire, his second of the season, he also scored in the home opener. What proved to be an important goal to help see off Richmond. And it was the exact same connection in that instance. A heel corner from the left side to the back post where Longmire had a free header. Leaudi spins through again. He's taken down, but we play on with Yonkum. Has Cano on the far side. Isaac Cano trying to strike back. And the Lexington lad dispossessed eventually, but he's shown some sparks down the left wing. It's Metinair, can't keep it in play. Heel will be disappointed with that pass. Spokane had numbers in transition. This game has been stretched back and forth. Hardly time to catch my breath here. Denton battling away with Yonkum. Foul given against the Maltese International for Lexington. Yonkum had a game-winning goal against Chattanooga Red Wolves. That remains Lexington's only win of the season nearly a month ago. And Coach Powell told me that as he still continues to adjust to USL League One, player with so much European and international experience that the further they can get him up the field, the closer he can get to the goal, it will only bring good things for Lexington. A lot of quality in those feet of SC's number eight. Spokane here, heel, plays it over to Metinair. Lots of time for the service, Doling rising, heel was in there as well, headed away, Yonkum. Lancaster battling for possession. And a 
great close from Smith. Inaugural USL Jägermeister Cup kicks off Saturday, April 27th, featuring League One teams. Regional rivalries highlight group play in round one with all games streaming exclusively on ESPN Plus. Getting ever closer to the kickoff of this in-season cup and so excited about the potential that it brings. Spokane will be in the Western Division. There's three and then Lexington will be in the Central Division. Both teams get their first game at home in cup play the weekend of April 27th. Deck into the feet of heel. Bobbled touch. Picked up here by Lancaster. He's got Cano streaking through the middle. Liaudi on the left and Robertson on the right. Robertson going inside, taken down by Jack Denton. Denton, another one of those Missouri State products I mentioned early on. He, Doling, and Javier Martin Heal, who's available on the bench today, all coming out of the Missouri State Bears program. Always fascinating to see those through lines, especially for an expansion team of where you find that talent. It's Robertson and Corrales over the free kick. Kick into the 25th minute. A flat delivery, but a dangerous one from Robertson. Headed away. Bringing up a UK Healthcare corner kick for the home team. Cano showing himself as a short option. They had. Corner three Number corners 12. in the opening couple of minutes of this game and you would have thought at that point that Lexington off to a hot start didn't make anything of it but here's Cano Corrales Robertson couldn't find a teammate so cavalry retreat last season exactly where they are in the standings after five games this year Yonkum splitting through Yonkum's got an open goal and he finds the side netting Yannick Yonkum ties the game for Lexington the deep run from the midfielder getting involved and then it's almost like the seas parted for him. Longmire didn't know who to step to. He got a little bit on this sliding challenge, I think a tiny deflection that may have just distracted Marancio enough. But credit to Yankum for keeping it low and hard into the far corner. The technique of a seasoned pro. Yankum earns his second goal of the season. Well, Powell's comments proving prescient as he said, Yankum needs to get closer to the goal and good things will happen. Well, he found himself in a great position there. And we are level after 27 minutes. An enthralling first half from Toyota Stadium. Longmire canceled out by Yonkum, and we sit at one to one. Credit Abel Caputo for the assist on that goal. As the two midfielders linking up for Lexington.
Lancaster. Important touch from Denton, but Lexington come away with it again. Yonkum, win behind his sails. Robertson in good position, header, Leoudi. This is what you expect to see from Lexington. Robertson in the wide position. Doesn't miss with the delivery. What a ball. The outstretched Leoudi did everything he could to get there. Positive signs for the home side. Nutmeg, they're gonna play on here. Yonkum has it at his feet. Tried to double down on Denton. You can just see the weight lifted off the shoulder of some of these Lexington players of that early goal. Lou Young, service into the box. Collected at the far side by Corrales. <laughs> It's a group with so much flair and potency that when they play with that uptick of confidence and togetherness, like you see from Cano here, can produce some special results. Of course, on the other side, Feedman's velocity are just sitting there with their legs sprung, trying to seek out those moments to counter as they did all throughout the early parts of this game, finding that opening goal. Lovely balance to this one so far. Reedy taken down late by Corrales. Referee given a verbal warning here. So just keep those tempers down a little bit. Metzenaer making progress. Has Reedy in the channel. Reedy unable to get turned. Doling waiting in the middle. And the shot fired in by Denton. Double deflection. Goal kick for Lexington. As we will pause for a water break here. The game finally poised after 30 minutes. A goal in the 19th minute from Ahmed Longmire, assisted by Luis Heel. As we get another look at the scoring here to catch you up on what you may have missed, Longmire was wide open from the corner. That was how it got started as Heel picked out the pass they wanted. Some interference ran perhaps in the six yard box. And it worked out for Spokane, but then Yannick Yonkum striking back just a few minutes later. Seven minutes later to be exact on the assist from Abel Caputo. Pegging back to 1-1 for Lexington. Look at that through pass. And then the moment of hesitation from Longmire was all that Yonkum needed to find the far corner. Well, April in Lexington, 75 degrees and sunny, certainly warranted for them to get this water break here and a chance to sort of reset for both of these teams. Early pressure from Lexington, a strong response from Spokane, of course, scoring first. And then ever since that, Lexington has really late raised the level they're playing with a lot of confidence, strutting their stuff right now. So interesting to see how Spokane will respond. Or can Lexington keep up this momentum for the final 15 minutes or so here in the first half?
can't watch the match, tune in on Sirius XM FC 157, North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Plus your live matches from the USL, MLS, Premier League, and more, all on Sirius XM FC 157 and the new Sirius XM app. Liaudi all the way through and finds the back of the net. Azad Liaudi runs up the falls all by himself and through the legs of the goalkeeper with an outstanding solo goal for Lexington. Had all the space in the world. Gets around, and it's the finish. It's the finish at the end of all of it. You could say he's lucky to make it past Longmire, but no luck about the final touch. Five hole on Marencio. And that's what Lexington has been waiting for from Azad Liaudi. He's shown flashes of that dribbling ability. It's led to assists, and now a goal of his own Super sensational. First goal in Lexington colors. It's his 13th goal in League One play. He previously scored for FC Tucson and Tormenta in the past. 12 goals last season in MLS Next Pro getting his first tally of the 2024 campaign. Of course, plenty of noise about Cameron Lancaster and rightly so after his signing, but there is just such a depth of attacking talent in this Lexington team. Not to mention a couple of guys that are missing today in Diouf and Jaden Onan who if you joined us late, are not available. And yet still, they have a front three of Lancaster, Liaudi, and Isaac Cano, causing all kinds of problems. But Spokane, in no way out of this. They have been pegged back for a lot of the half, but they provided plenty of threat, none more so than their set pieces. Luis Heal swung high and curling, headed away by Lexington. Bringing up another corner. Their last corner resulted in a goal. Lexington have struggled to defend them all season long. Waldeck is the option for an in-swinger. Watch the corner flag whipping winds up to 21 mile an hour gusts today in the Commonwealth. Making set pieces that much harder to defend. This one doesn't beat the first man. Smith back to Fernandez. Thought about a shot. He's going to carry it himself. Looking for help. Finds it in the form of Denton. Luis Hill lets off a rocket. And it's through the hands of Amal Knight, Spokane are level. Luis Heal. Showing incredible range, a friendly bounce off the turf. And excited to see the movement on this ball. The pressure was too strong and then he just decided why not have a go. Clearly the shot with plenty of pace and dip on it and that bounce awkwardly in front of Knight but he will be incredibly disappointed with that one. Spills and thrills and lots of goals. 2-2 two -two through 38 minutes. We saw 10 goals in the two games yesterday in League One, and it continues to deliver here with four in the first half. Yeah. 
Waldeck has heel once more. Had the run from Doling. Great recovery from Mendez. But Spokane flipping the script here. After Lexington had taken the lead. And Heel just finding himself in so many different key positions. Well, remember that last goal all started from a corner as well. It was recycled a bit. High back post ball, hung up in the wind and nobody could keep track of that one. Concern here for Mendez. He's gonna require further attention here. Something happened off the ball and quickly went down to the turf. Another quick break. Spokane striking first. Lexington recovering to take a lead of their own. And then the visitors level once more. Here's another look at Mendez pulling up and grabbing the back of that leg. Of course, always hard to tell from our broadcast point of view, but hope for the best for Mendez going off, going down off the ball like that. And he has been such a crucial piece of what Lexington have done this year in the back line. He's played all five League One games and he has not been off the pitch for a single minute. So this would pose a new problem for Darren Powell. He's one of his trusted troops that he knew from his time working with the Inter-Miami organization. But there are a number of defenders available on the bench should they need to make a swap here about five minutes from halftime. carefully considering his options. And Daniel Chica getting ready here. He's the one who stepped in in the last match at center back for Kalen Fox. And they will require the sub. A big switch at the back for a team that's already had some turbulence here in the first 40 minutes defensively. Chica got baptism by fire in his first start as they conceded three goals. He was the, on the unfortunate end of a penalty decision that was one of the goals for Tormenta. But his long ball here looking for Liaudi. Can't replicate his stunning second goal. Finding another pocket. Denton. Colin Fernandez. Waldeck 1 2 with Doling. Looking for the angled through ball. Malcolm shrugs off Fernandez, but the challenge enough to win Spokane the ball back. As the game swings back and forth, at the moment it's Spokane applying the pressure. Ball for Smith runs out of play. That's the direction that the wind is blowing, so some adjustments needed perhaps on a, the power of a few of those passes.
And at a point nearing halftime where Lexington doesn't feel the need to take any more risks. Knight going long on the goal kick. Lancaster left over by Lodge. Now Lancaster on the turf. He waved straight away to the trainers over on the side for Lexington. And this is a huge concern. Already without Diouf, already without Onan. Mendez goes out and then just minutes later, Cameron Lancaster able to walk off here on his own power, but Never a good sign when they signal straight away for the trainer. It looks like this might just be a job for the magic spray. So we'll keep an eye on Lancaster, but for now, 10 men. And immediately back to 11, but a noticeable limp there for number 17. Couple of minutes till halftime, so we'll have to keep that thing loose. But 45th minute, Waldeck. Colin Fernandez swinging it in. At the far post, it's Reedy. Metanier keeps it low. Denton can recycle the possession as we have six minutes of first half stoppage time. Back heel, Waldeck. It finds Smith inside the box, looking for that left foot, and couldn't find his feet. All across the end line, though, so corner kick for Spokane. One way or another, both goals have come from corners. One straight to Longmire, one after an initial clearance, eventually came back to heel, who scored from well outside the area. The captain sends it in, looking for Longmire at the back post again. Spokane has a chance to draw it up with Waldeck from the other side now. It's UK Healthcare corner kick. Of course, they've got Longmire who scored the goal. Also, Lodge, six foot five, doling as well, six foot two. Plenty of targets for Waldeck to aim for. High in the sky, Lodge is the closest. A tussle with Christian Liu Young. And the young defender did enough to put off the towering center half. But it does just feel like every time there's a corner for Spokane, the Somebody is getting free. And as long as the delivery is good enough, they've been first to pretty much every header. Waldeck seeking heel, who was offside. Lexington has now conceded 14 goals in their last five matches in all competitions, going back to that crazy cup game against Vermont. Cano, looking for Liaudi. The Lex 
Lexington getting to play with the wind in their face this half. You can see how the through ball almost checked up for Liaudi. Doling unable to complete the hold up play. It's back with Caputo, but Doling trying to make up for his giveaway here. Metzenaire gets back. Lancaster off to Yonkum. Corrales and Cano. Liaudi not on the same page as his teammate there. Spots Kamarni Smith. Plenty of contact between he and Kalen Fox. And some good sportsmanship between the two, but this will be yet another corner for Spokane in the dying minutes of the first half. Seventh corner of the match for Velocity FC. Spun in by Waldeck. Good delivery and a punch from him all night. Fernandez trying to bring it down. Still a chance for Spokane to tag a third before halftime. relief for Lexington as they will be able to nearly tick off the rest of the planned six minutes of stoppage time here. Just need to get the ball out one more time. Fernandez with a miss kick. Rare from him. Chance for Lexington to break. Yonkum tracking. Headed away, and there's the halftime whistle. All even after the first 45, Spokane took an early lead. The game was flipped on its head with two goals from Lexington, and then Spokane leveling it back up in a topsy-turvy first half. The first time these teams have ever met in League One play. But what an incredible 45 minutes of action. If the second half is anything like what we saw in this first period, we are in for a fantastic finish. Yonkum and Liaudi delivering for the home team. We will have stats, highlights, and plenty more at halftime coming up after this. Lexington is the Kentuckiest place in the world. Just look at it. It's by far the bluegrassiest, the bourbonest. See? The artsiest, and hands down, the horsiest. Oh, look, that one has a baby. I don't know why you would look anywhere else. Looking for the coolest, most Kentuckiest getaway? Look at Lexington. Girls like you aren't runners, they said. Well, I wasn't. Let's go ahead and get some pictures of that knee, okay? Six months, down the drain. Give up. Keep the rhythm going. Or get up. Perfect. Who's not a runner now? Yeah, you don't have to be an elite athlete to be treated like one. UK Healthcare Orthopedic Surgery and Sports Medicine, the power of advanced medicine.
Well, an exciting first half between Spokane Velocity and Lexington SC finds us at 2-2, and it lived up to an incredible week six in USL League One. Let's take a look at some of those highlights. Well, the action got started with Omaha and Knoxville in a testy one down there at Regal Soccer Stadium. Jalen Chrysler sent off in this match and the frustration boiled over as one Knoxville had its first loss of the season. And meanwhile, another important matchup at the top of the table on Friday night as Juan Carlos Obregón opened the scoring for Charlotte, but Greenville, as they're known to do, fought back in this one. Eventually, they earned a penalty late on, and anybody in their right mind would have bet the house on Lion McKinnon, but Austin Peck, happy to stand in his way. He was the hero for Charlotte as they held on for a 1-0 win against the league leaders. We were also treated to the Henny Derby on Saturday night with forward Madison opening the scoring before a goal of the season contender from Maximiliano Shenfield, which will be the moment that is replayed over and over and over from this one. Richmond went on to actually take the lead two to one, but the fighting Flamingos struck back with Augustine Davila recording a goal that earned them a draw late on in that one. And we got only our second look at Chattanooga Red Wolves this season, and boy, things looked good for them in a wet and wild night in the final action of Saturday as they traveled to take on Central Valley Fuego. They built up a lead early in this game, and despite a couple of goals from Central Valley, Chattanooga never threw away that lead. It got as close as three to two in this one before the Red Wolves were able to hang on and come away with a 4-2 victory. Well, halftime in Lexington. 2-2 is the score here as a weekend of thrills continues in USL League One. Two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Yeah, trick. I said what I said. I don't care. I paint the town red. If you can survive this, it's going to make the whole story that much better. The bright horses are broken free from the fields. women's game. They want to see women's soccer. They want to play women's soccer. And that's what we're building at the USL. doesn't care who you are or why you hurt, but pain can be mastered if you know the way. Fight back with Tiger Balm's legendary herbal power. Trusted for over a hundred years, our proven blend of camphor, menthol, and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living. This is the way of the tiger. We all have goals. But let's be honest. Most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. 
But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Welcome back to our USL League One halftime show as we take a look at some news and notes around the league. Matt Barnes and the Gronkowski family joining in as new members of investors in the USL joining an already star-studded list. We've got the US Open Cup returning in the midweek coming up and you'll see Spokane Velocity in that competition. And then our men of March, Angelo Kelly Rosales winning player of the month for one Knoxville as they were truly the flavor of the month in League One. And we see our team of the week from week five. Some great performances across the board highlighted, of course, by Liam McKinnon, who has truly taken the league by storm in the early going. He and Leo Castro have just formed a fantastic duo for the league leaders, Greenville Triumph, who are still at the top of the table at the end of this week. So we take a look at what's coming up soon. Next week, Spokane will be taking on Richmond, and then you'll see Charlotte Independence against Union Omaha, Chattanooga against Northern Colorado, and Greenville versus South Georgia Tormenta across ESPN and Galazzo. Well, there was a sad moment in the Lexington community this week, but Lexington doing their part to support RJ, a U10 player, a goalkeeper on the Lexington youth team. And he and his grandmother were unfortunately in a car accident, ended up in the ICU but we wanted to take a moment to wish RJ all the best and a speedy recovery and great job Lexington for helping him get back on track. We'll be back with the second half. Lexington is the Kentuckiest place in the world. Just look at it. It's by far the bluegrassiest, the bourbonist. See? The artsiest. And hands down, the horsiest. Oh, look, that one has a baby. I don't know why you would look anywhere else. Looking for the coolest, most Kentuckiest getaway? Look at Lexington. Girls like you aren't runners, they said. Well, I wasn't. Let's go ahead and get some pictures of that knee, okay? Six months, down the drain. Give up? Keep the rhythm going. Or get up. Perfect. Who's not a runner now? Good, you don't up. have to be an elite athlete to be treated like one. UK Healthcare Orthopedic Surgery and Sports Medicine. The power of advanced medicine. Well, happy to see our friends at the 509 Syndicate enjoying the match today at Brick West out there in Spokane. Beautiful day in Eastern Washington. And they have had a lot to cheer for in the first half 
we're going to take a look at those first half highlights to get prepared and show you what you may have missed early on Spokane struck first Ahmed Longmire rising highest at the back post on the service from Luis Heel and getting the visitors out to an early lead but it didn't last long because Yannick Yankum found the side netting with a beautiful finish to score his second goal of the season at that point we were level at one to one and then Lexington turned it up another another notch with Azad Liaudi going all the way through from the halfway line and nutmegging Carlos Marancio at the tightest of angles with the outside of the foot. A lovely, lovely finish from Lexington's number nine. Things were looking sunny at Toyota Stadium, but there was one more twist in the first half as Luis Hill lined one up from distance. It bobbled over the hands of Amal Knight. And Heel left at the halftime break with a goal and an assist as we leveled the score at two. This was the breakdown between the two teams. Not a whole lot to separate them, as you could tell by the score line. Six shots to four, 52% possession for Spokane. A ton of corners for both teams, seven to five, just showing how much pressure got all the way on the inside of each goal throughout that first half. But a clean half, and we are ready just about for second half action. Hopefully the second half will bring just as much as we saw in the first half. Four goals in the first 45 minutes and unfortunately a couple changes required for Lexington as well. We saw Modesto Mendez go down in the first half. So Daniel Chica's in there and then we see Khalid Balagoon pulling up his socks as it seems like there's been another change at halftime. Wonder if Cameron Lancaster, who was struggling at the end of that first half, might be the man who departed. So we'll keep an eye on that as we get things going here in this second half at Toyota Stadium presented by UK Healthcare. There's confirmation of our sub, so the stellar goal store is gonna have to wait a little longer to keep on his march toward 100 career goals, but certainly Balagoon a capable re replacement and somebody who provides a bit of a different challenge. A super sized striker, Khalid Balagoon at six foot four. Got a change to note for Spokane Velocity as well. Kamarni Smith coming off replaced by their new signing, Ariel Mumba, getting his first minutes in a Spokane Velocity uniform. More on him later as Doling collects the ball in the box. Here is Mumba. Served to the back stick and right away he nearly had an assist. Luis Heel on the end of it and couldn't make the right contact. Great vision from Mumba. Heel doing his best Zlatan impression but didn't quite come off for the captain. How about Ariel Mumba getting involved in the action straight away as a halftime substitute? He was signed on April 2nd, just one day before that U.S. Open Cup game that was Spokane's last match. So obviously was not going to be ready for that one. And then they've had this 11-day break to get him all situated with the team, available from the bench today. And then the halftime switch from Lee Viedman. Said he was really excited about the versatility that Mumba brings. He can play on either wing. He can play in the number 10. And he's even played some outside back in his career as well. Heel continues to pull all the strings. His heat map has been nearly universal throughout the opening sequences of this match. Great challenge between Cano and Balagoon to do the defensive work and win it back here. But Cano unable to hold on to the ball. Metanair such a sure tackler. Leads the team in tackles attempted and tackles one Metanair. So in addition to his stellar offensive capabilities, which he may make more headlines for, 
you get him in a 1v1 situation defensively, there is not a lot that that man hasn't seen across the years playing in France and playing internationally for Madagascar. Cano finding a pocket on the spin. Plays it through for Liaudi, left-footed strike. Sailing wide, but Lexington finding connections yet again. Liaudi never able to find his feet the way that he wanted there. Always a little bit off balance, but worth a hit. If we learned anything from heel in the first half, you never know what can happen if you just let that thing fly. And looks like we'll have our first booking of the match as heel goes down here. Caputo not happy with it, but a referee deciding to set the tone early on here in the second half. Here's another look at the late challenge coming through. Mumba. Ball was a little bit behind Doling. see his initiative to look forward every time that he picks up the ball though. Immediately bringing some positivity into this Spokane side. Wonderful running control from Doling. Goes inside. Cut back to the middle and then tapped through by Mumba. Cleared but only as far as Denton. Poor pass and Fernandez forced to foul. Liaudi tracking back. Select the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. Lexington showing their ability to break the press from the back as Cano earns a foul. I think maybe some frustration, especially from Caputo, who was just booked for a similar challenge. This one comes through for Balagoon. Did he stay on side? And actually, it's Liaudi turning the corner. He's got Balagoon in the middle and far post Robertson. Off the back stanchion. Looks like it required a save from Marancio. Either that or a deflection. Either way, a corner upcoming here as Liaudi snuck around the back. Robertson had all the space in the world. And I believe it was Colin Fernandez who got in the way for an important block. So UK healthcare corner kick coming up for Corrales. In swinging, left footed corner headed first by Lodge. Denton will have to keep it in. He's got Doling as an outlet who sends it further up the line, allowing Mumba to chase. And <laughs> Doling putting the fright of God and somebody down on the touchline there. Stay safe on the sideline, ladies and gentlemen. Cano. Such a bright presence with the ball at his feet and not just because of his boots. Waldeck streaks up the left side. Seeing a ball towards the back post, nobody home for Spokane.
Waldeck, a man who's crossing is such a key part of his game. You can tell there are times where he just hits it into the best possible space and hopes that there is a teammate there. It can be an effective strategy, but that time they weren't able to keep up on the back post. Both keepers having moments that will probably keep them up tonight from that first half. Marancio getting nutmegged by Liaudi and Knight with the unfortunate bobble on heels long shot. They say that the test of a goalkeeper is to have a goldfish memory, to be able to forget as quickly as possible those mistakes and make the next save. That's the task they'll have facing them after four goals in the first half. Changes in attack for both teams at halftime. But both have continued to keep the foot on the gas. Mumba. Cuts back onto his left foot, spots the through ball. Reedy coming in, was offside. Slight mistiming, enough to get him on the wrong side of Chica. Well, it may have felt like Daniel Chica's appearance kind of came out of nowhere last week against Tormenta, but a player with experience in USL Championship last season a young player with a lot of room to grow, said Darren Powell. He came in as a trialist and earned himself a short-term contract with Ebenezer Akon out with injury, hoping to return soon. Chico was kind of signed as a depth option, and then when some unforeseen challenges came up, he was straight into the starting lineup in the last game. Had a lot to learn from after that matchup against Tormenta, but a very, very capable center back. And Powell emphasized to me, and somebody he's really excited to be in the team. Forced into action today because Modesto Mendez, who's been an Ironman so far in league play for Lexington, went off with what appeared to be some kind of muscle injury. No Diouf, no Onan from the start as well for Lexington if you joined us late. Robertson, Lou Young off the back of Waldeck. And the UK healthcare corner coming up for Lexington. to snap this three-game losing streak in the league. They've looked the part this afternoon. Corrales trying to help his team in front here. Couldn't find the angle for his cutback cross. He tracks down Waldeck, forces him backwards. Audi snatching onto a loose pass. Balagoon couldn't return it to him, but it continues with Yonkum. 
and Cano. He saw Liaudi in the corner of his eye, and the patch didn't, the pass did not match, but a good idea from Cano. As Lexington took a turn on the counter, spent more of the opposite through most of the game. But Spokane getting their foot on the ball a bit here in the last few minutes. Mumba tried to get past Corrales, the experienced Cuban, not giving him any change. A lagoon crowded out by four white shirts. Football 2024 is here. Live your dream, rep your team, and play as your favorite USL championship club. eFootball is free to play. Download now. Cano at the controls. Liaudi brings Lou Young into the play. He's got Robertson for the drop. Goes all the way back to Chica. Lexington trying to set up shop in the attacking half. Two teams that really like to play and keep the ball on the ground. These battles of possession and extended spells have gone back and forth all throughout the 60 minutes. Remarkably this season, Spokane has averaged 100 more completed passes per game than Lexington. So although they do play the similar styles, it hasn't quite come off as well for these two sides. Spokane's identity early in their story as a League One club has been easy to identify, Darren Powell told me. And we got a switch here from Lee Viedman Andre Lewis coming in at the 60 minute mark, replacing Colin Fernandez. So that's a like for like swap in the center of the park. Lewis may provide a slight bit more attacking impetus than Fernandez, but they will play in the same position. Part of that double pivot. Looks like Metzadir is on side here. Looks across and cut away by Lou Young who comes out to pressure the shot, heel. And a huge collision at halfway. They have to stop the play here because potential for a head injury as Balagoon clashed with Longmire, it looks like, is the man on the floor. Balagoon, only slightly softer than a brick wall. Oof. And Longmire took it on the chin. But a chance to get in some fluids. Good to see Longmire back to his feet. Our first goal scorer today who started all the fun in the first half. Looks fine to continue, but no doubt a bit shaken up.
Well, this match hanging finally in the balance. Draw would not move either team up the table a whole lot, although Spokane is jammed in with a number of teams on six points. But a win for either side today could take them into the top four. I know it's early in the season, folks, but at least for Lexington, after this, their sixth match of the season, they'll be over a quarter of the way through their league games in 2024. Time really flies. So it's not an overstatement to say that this is a huge 30 minutes within their season, not only to snap the losing streak, but to potentially find a big three points against a very well-drilled Spokane side who has caused plenty of problems today. And likewise, they could continue a hot start and put themselves in contention for those top four spots. And it's Denton going in the book here for his tackle on Caputo. Late and didn't make a whole lot of effort to get out of the way, Denton. But once he was there, not a lot he could do to stop that from happening. So he joins Abel Caputo in the book as our two enforcers, if you will, have played their roles today. But those are the only two with bookings. It's been a fairly clean game all around. Heel with options. Finds Ariel Mumba in his club debut. Scissoring challenge from Corrales. Sets up this UK healthcare corner. Velocity at two quarter. Number 18, Derek Wolf. Waldeck examines his targets. Hangs in the air, Longmire again! Nearly had his second of the day. Once again, the marking leaving a lot to be desired from Lexington SC. Longmire with a great opportunity to give his team the lead. Huge leap and he just wanted it more. But it ends up bouncing off of his center back partner, Lodge. Lewis plays Waldeck back heel. Reedy. Great sequence from Spokane will result in another corner as the away team pushes to go ahead for the second time today. Heel barking the orders. It's flat, it's near post, it's not past the first man, but it will be another corner. Skewed off the foot of Christian Liu Young. Lots of contact in the area going both ways. Oh, Knight goes down, Longmire. Looks like flashed the yellow card. It's a cheap one to give away if you're Longmire. No need to do this. Although, you have to say that Knight definitely sold it for all it was worth. But a clever play to put the goal scorer in the referee's book here. And as he will have to deal with Khalid Balagoon the rest of the day, worth keeping an eye on. of 
inexperience for a team that has shown so much composure in its first season. Coach Beeman said that there are three qualities that every single player on his team possesses. A growth mindset, the humility to take coaching and get better, and work rate and dedication. And those hardworking traits are what have put Spokane Velocity in this position, not to mention the skills on display. Luis Heel goes for the back post. Half shot, half cross, and in the end, only will be a goal kick from a very dangerous position. It looked like he was lining up the shot at first. Maybe that was the intention to make everybody believe it after his first half banger. And then opt for the cross, but teammates unable to get on the end of it. Lodge, one of the few men who can take Balagoon in the size department. Does well against the big forward. And Spokane winning a cheap foul here with Reedy. Spokane searching for its first road points of the season of their four club history as well. 0-2, they've dropped games to league leading Greenville. And more recently to Charlotte. Heel doesn't make the cleanest connection, but Alarms have to be going off in that Lexington back line with the amount of times that Heel has had a chance either as a scorer or a creator in this 70 minutes so far. He has been absolutely running the show. Yet another key player for Lexington needs some attention here. Yannick Yonkum is on his backside. No Diouf, no Jaden Onan. Modesto Mendez subbed off, Lancaster subbed off already in this game. See what the result is here for Yonkum, but Lexington may have a deep and talented roster, but you lose this many players. It certainly wears you thin. Not a good sign to see him taking off the tape here. This is a experienced pro. Knows when his race is run. Remarkably, Yonkum, we think of Cameron Lancaster as a seasoned veteran professional. Well, Yonkum, despite just being 26 years of age, five years younger than Lancaster, has played 5,000 more professional minutes than the championship uh, stalwart Lancaster. He played over 108 matches for his last club in Malta and plays internationally for the Maltese team as well. Yankum looks like he's got a bit of confusion here. He seemed to be preparing to exit the game and hoping that he could be replaced. It doesn't look like they've brought anybody else on yet. So play continues. Lexington down a man for the moment, but on the prowl, Liaudi. And oh, there's Yonkum back on the field. Well. A push in the back from Mumba. Given the last few plays, wonder if the ref goes to his book here. No, but Corrales is down on the turf, clutching his back. Absolute chaos with Yonkum surprisingly coming back in and then Corrales clearly shoved in the back. So here's your subs. 
Nico Brown coming in. The Jamaican international out of Baltimore. Eight goals last season for Lexington. Certainly a player who could find a winner here. He comes in for Robertson, and then Yankum does finally exit as Pierre Manet finally had the time to get ready as his replacement. Well, the second half hasn't had as many goals, but certainly plenty of action. Dangerous set piece for Lexington. Caputo got caught with the wind behind it, I think, as Doling is in a tense conversation here. Balagoon and Liaudi throwing some words back at him. He feels like he was held on the set piece. And it's Balagoon playing peacemaker. But Doling still wants a piece of Liaudi. See if we can find out what happened here. Keep an eye on the back post, bottom right side of your picture. Clearly some words being exchanged because Balagoon trying to calm everything down before it even kicked off. Credit to him for helping his teammates keep his cool. And looks like our referee just letting it blow over. Don't think any cards were issued there. But certainly something to keep an eye on. The USL Championship is on CBS Sports and ESPN platforms all season long. Catch live matches and expert analysis every day on the CBS Sports Galazzo Network and ESPN+. Plus. Go to uslchampionship.com for the complete TV listings. Cano picking it up in the box. Fires off a shot. They need to complete the clearance, and Lange eventually does. Now Doling thrown to the ground dramatically as the referee awards a free kick and he's once again at the center of it. Well, this is what you want out of your number nine. Seal off the defenders, serve as the outlet and win a foul to help your team get up the field. Doling is that classic center forward that Coaches love to rely on. It looks like we've reached our second half hydration break. Tensions rising between these two clubs, both in search of a win. Spokane has been off for 11 days. They've got a three game road trip starting today and trying to set the tone for that big stretch of games that includes US Open Cup against Las Vegas Lights on Wednesday night. Looking for their first road points in their League One history. As we take a look back at how we got to 2-2 two, two in this game, Ahmed Longmire got things started off of a corner kick for Spokane with the one nil lead. And then Yannick Yankum, who since had to come off with injury, settled the score at one with a lovely finish. And Liaudi, who's been excellent all game, doubled the damage, bringing Lexington 2-1 into the lead. And Luis Heal fired back with this incredible 35 yard strike that dipped and swerved and caused problems for Amal Knights. That was our most recent tally to get us to 2-2. All the way back in the first half, the second half has been even. Still plenty of chances for both sides, but haven't broken that score line. And a much different cast of characters with Lancaster, Yonkum coming off for Lexington. Smith replaced by Mumba, who's been very positive for Spokane. 
some switches in the midfield for both teams as well. As we head into the final stages with Azad Liaudi. Facing multiple defenders, beating them all, and beating his teammates with the service as well. Long ball, challenged by the sunlight, but Reedy did well to adjust. Spokane pinning Lexington back. for Heel. Got the wrong side of Corrales who goes to ground. Heel going down, no whistle. Carried away by Mane. And now Cano bursts up the sideline. Mane found the return to Cano, but Laj was three steps ahead. And Liaudi going down as well, just outside your picture. Play goes on here, trying to get back to his feet, Liaudi, help the team out any way he can. He'll get a breather here if this ball runs out, but it's not going to. And now the game will be stopped to have a chance to look at Liaudi. Just hard to believe the luck that is hitting Lexington. It's been true over the course of the season, but none more so than today with a handful of off the ball injuries that really just can't do a whole lot about. And all to keep players as well. Here's a look at Liaudi going down, feeling something and just deja vu to the cases of Mendez, Yankum. They've got one sub left to use, but don't really have any attacking options left on the bench. Anthony Patty is getting ready. He's a center back. He and Eric Seja Gonzalez, and then the backup goalkeeper, Austin Causey, are the only players that haven't come into the match yet. As we mentioned, the litany of injuries that have faced Lexington today. So Darren Powell's gonna bring on Patty. Liaudi withdrawn after a stellar game and a highlight goal in the first half. And we'll see how this shakes out, but undoubtedly gonna take on a more defensive posture. Lexington started in the 4-4-2. It was Liaudi and Lancaster. It's been Liaudi and Balagoon throughout the second half since Lancaster came out. Looks like Balagoon's gonna be all by himself now. And you can still hear the coaches barking out orders as they adjust to these unexpected circumstances. Cano has definitely shifted over to the right and Brown more so through the middle. But. And 
now a chance for Velocity to feel out what gaps they will get with this new personnel they're facing. Metanair has formed a great combination with Mumba here in their first few minutes on the pitch together. Reedy trying to get in behind Chica. Reedy comes inside and barges through the back of Chica to relieve the pressure briefly for Lexington. Reedy trying to make something happen himself and so often is the case. You lose the ball, you're eager to get it back, and the defender sees that coming, able to get between the player and the ball and draw that foul with pretty high consistency. Chica had the experience to get that job done. But Spokane have it back again, and clearly Lexington unable to apply quite as much pressure up the field with subbing their Number nine off for a defender. Patty is here playing on the left side. Not sure, maybe they've shifted to a back three and he's kind of playing ahead of Corrales. Either that or he's actually just the left winger. But either way, an extra defender on that Lexington wasn't really intending to. And maybe a case of them trying to just see out the draw here at home. But circumstances come up, you have to adjust as a coach and do your best with the players you have available. Right now, Balagoon is the main attacking option and his ability to win a throw here will certainly help Lexington. So how might Spokane adjust? It looks like Doling is on his way off the pitch. Referee frustrated with him for not leaving at the closest point. I guess he wanted him to go off on the far side of the field, but Doling makes his way off, and Javier Martin heel onto the field. He's a very versatile player, so he could play a number of positions. He usually plays out wide, whether it be as a winger or a defender. He can play in the middle of the pitch as well. As the chessboard gets more complicated in this tactical battle between two coaches continues. We got a foul in the corner. Waldeck giving a cheap one away, and this is like gold for Lexington right now, who don't have their most creative players on the pitch, and so a set piece opportunity in the final five is all they can ask for here, and they need a good delivery from Corrales. With a slightly more menacing angle than a corner kick, but very similar. Corrales floated in, header, back post Brown has a hit. And it comes from Monet. Back heel to Brown. 1v1 to the end line, clips it in, and a collision at the front post, but strong hands from Marancio. Critical defensive stand from Spokane. Lexington trying to steal a late winner. Brown's 1v1 ability coming in handy, but nobody to meet the cross. A misplaced pass out of the back. Falls here for Nico Brown, who's got a run from Balagoon. He goes nutmeg himself, goes down in the box. Referee waves it away quickly. He had a good look trailing the play. 
question is if Brown could have actually gotten to that ball. I think that hurt his case a little bit because there was definitely some contact. And he did get it through the legs of the first defender. But certainly one that the Lexington fans will at least want another look at. And Spokane, shades of late penalty disappointment against Charlotte Independence in their last USL League One game a couple weeks ago where they were denied a penalty late on that could have given them the win. They ended up losing in stoppage time right afterwards. They know the heartbreak at the penalty spot. And for as tight as the second half has been, it does feel like there could be a goal left in this one. Should be a fair bit of stoppage time as well, given the injuries and subs that we've seen. But we are into nearly the final minute of regulation. Cano to Mane. And Brown gets free, has a shot. Clawed in by Marancio. Tough angle for Brown, but with the right strike, could have been a good opportunity. This is Marcelo Lodge grabbing at his right leg. He's been a stalwart for Spokane here in their inaugural season. Lodge, the Massachusetts native, six feet five. A tough season with Las Vegas last year in the championship. And he's been one of the foundational pieces for Lee Viedman this year. Not only would it be a blow for the final seven minutes here that we see with our stoppage time counter, but it would also be Big loss going forward if he's unable to return here. And a player getting treatment for Lexington as well. This has been a brutal match physically. There are a couple of center backs on the bench for Spokane. One of them is Cameron Miller, so he is going to come on for Lodge making sure that they are at full bill of health as much as possible for the final few minutes here. But Lexington has no such luxury. They've used all five substitutions. And so whoever it is down getting treatment right now is either going to have to suck it up or leave his team down a man. Hopefully just a little bit of stretching. I'm trying to figure out who that is on the far side. But Lodge off. And Miller in. He had an outstanding performance in the Open Cup versus LA Force in their last match. Certainly a capable defender. Here's Chica. Didn't deal with the initial ball well. It's back to Knight. And Chica again playing out with Brown. Ball went out. And this is a chance, a big chance for Spokane. Watch number 22 come over. Mumba is new to this whole thing. His first appearance for Spokane. Yeah, this is going to be Metanere, without a doubt. The long throw specialist. Not a lot of room to work with here at Toyota Park. And on a windy day, anything could happen here. Metanere has produced stoppage time assists from throw-ins already this year. The wind was in his face and the ball held up with that high trajectory.
Pino defending. Metzenaire still over there. Now Mumba clipped back post. Knight comes out, he misses it, but it's cleared away by Corrales. Could Lexington hit on the break? Big touch from Longmire, has to hold off Lou Young. And Mumba just wanting his team to settle down for a moment, but they're gonna go again here. Four minutes remaining, and the minimum of seven. Spokane on the front foot of the closing stages as these two wounded teams battling to a conclusion after four first half goals and a tense second half. Lots of new players being relied on. Who could find a winner? Lewis. For Metzener. Lewis likes to hit him from deep. He passes off to Mumba. It's curled in. Heads go up, away from Lexington. Balagoon coming away with it. Referee saw a ball taken in the challenge, nothing more. And a soft pass from Mumba, but Spokane can hold on to it. No pressure really from Lexington at the halfway line. They're bunkered in right now. Lou Young was the guy who was injured. He's just playing as a false striker because that's the only place he can stand right now. Out of subs are Lexington, trying to see it to the finish line. Lou Young fighting through the pain. Longmire and the wind carrying it out of play. Huge relief for Lexington. Few extra seconds can tick off here. Chica working it up the line. Lexington find themselves dearly holding on to a point at home against the upstart Spokane Velocity. Challenged by Fox, who does well to come away with it and wins the foul. Enough pressure to, or enough to relieve some pressure here for Lexington. Since that last injury to Lodge, right as stoppage time began, they've seen this out so well, knowing the situation they were in basically playing with 10 at this point. Already with down a forward and up a defender, they've had to bunker in Lexington, close to the finish line. But Spokane pushing for more. They took the lead first in this game. Final moments in the seven awarded minutes of stoppage time. There might be a little bit more, but we're at the referee's discretion now as Waldeck still playing it backwards. Lou Young chasing as much as his legs allow him. And Lewis. No forward passes available. It's Metzenaire. At some point, it's got to come into the box. It's Heel. Now Miller out to Waldeck. Can he find a cross? It's swung in. Header saved by Knight. A huge save from Lexington's big goalie. 
pushing it over the bar in the final moments, but they still have a corner to defend here. Presented by UK Healthcare. This has been a spirited effort in the second half. But both of the goals Spokane have scored started at the corner's flag. Waldeck whistled away just as he was about to take it. Referee sorting something out inside the box. This might be the final moment. Waldeck sends it in. Knight punches. And Lexington sneak away, limp away from the finishing with a single point at home, but it snaps a three game losing streak. Spokane had a lead, Lexington had a lead, and in the end, the honors even between Lexington SC and Spokane Velocity. A mall night coming up huge in the final moments to keep the score at two to two. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're going to give you highlights and a story of how this game went when we return to wrap it all up. Final score, 2-2. Lexington is the Kentuckiest place in the world. Just look at it. It's by far the bluegrassiest, the bourbonist. See? The artsiest, and hands down, the horsiest. Oh, look, that one has a baby. I don't know why you would look anywhere else. Looking for the coolest, most Kentuckiest getaway? Look at Lexington. Girls like you aren't runners, they said. Well, I wasn't. Let's go ahead and get some pictures of that knee, okay? Six months, down the drain. Give up. Keep the rhythm going. Or get up. Perfect. Who's not a runner now? Yeah, you don't have to be an elite athlete to be treated like one. UK Healthcare Orthopedic Surgery and Sports Medicine. The power of advanced medicine. Right, welcome back where your final score is two to two. Lexington SC fighting off injury and a spirited Spokane velocity to earn a point that by the end of that 97 minutes felt a bit like a win, I'd have to say. Let's take a look at the spins and spills of this thrilling matchup here on a sunny Sunday in Lexington. It feels like ages ago that Longmire started out the scoring on a great corner from Luis Heal, putting it on the head of his center back as Lexington's struggles to defend set pieces continued today. But they fired back with a great response in the first half. First, it was Yannick Yonkum, who later had to exit the game, but he made his impact felt with a great finish into the far post as the creative midfielder scored his second goal of the season. And Azad Liaudi getting his first in Lexington colors with this lovely piece of play past Longmire and right through the legs of Marancio. And then the eventual equalizer came courtesy of Luis Heel. For those nerds out here, how about 0.015 XG on this absolute rocket from heel as Knight unfortunately let it bobble over his hands but heel certainly 
had a part to play in that with a steamy strike from distance. And it finished two to two. Very even game all around. 12 shots to 11. Spokane Velocity with that edge in possession, which was certainly helped by the fact that Lexington were forced to retreat for the final stages of this match due to injury and men down. And eventually, 2-2 felt like a pretty fair scoreline when you consider all that we came through in this match. Well, it was the first time that we've ever seen Lexington and Spokane face off. And I think I speak for the fans in saying that we'd love to see plenty more where this came from. A four goal thriller, but the points split between Lexington SC and Spokane Velocity. Huge thank you to our crew, Brent, Jason, Dario, and Alex, and everybody at Toyota Stadium. I'm Parker Johnson signing off from Lexington. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League, League One, cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League, League One.